Yo, what is going on everyone in the XRP community? Hope you guys are having yourselves a fantastic day today as usual. As the cryptocurrency prices are sliding back under $1 trillion market cap. To put things into perspective though, I think over the last week, like this, uh, I believe the, either the SCP 500 or the NASDAQ literally lost like 1.5 trillion market cap in like a day. We're still early to crypto, guys. I know. If you've been an XRP like me the same amount of time since the days of the, you know, the beginning days of XRP at 20 cents, which used to actually be considered a very high price, actually, uh, it's been like four or five years. And yeah, we've ran up to, you know, $4 a coin average 2017. Uh, in the last year, you know, we ran up all the way to like, um, about $2, like literally exactly $2 a coin in some exchanges, but, um, we're now down at the levels where we are awaiting the pump because what goes up must come down. What's, what goes down must come up unless it's a rug pull. Uh, gaps gotta be filled. There's gaps all over the market. Uh, quick little meme today. Terra Luna classic is actually up like 45% on the day. This thing is printing green candles on the daily chart. Um, I would not touch this thing with a 10 foot pole. I would not touch this thing with the 20 foot pole. I don't think Jesus would touch this with the 50 foot pole. Um, I cannot trust this. I know it is booming right now and it might seem like a little something where you might throw in a couple hundred bucks go long or a couple hundred bucks go short. But I don't know, man, these meme coins, you can make tons of money. Millionaires can be made. There's news stories all the time of millionaires, you know, 17 year old millionaire made on freaking meme coins. But what the news stories never talk about is the average Joe that throws in like half of his savings and loses it all. Be very, very careful with these meme coins, guys, uh, because I knew I like I know you're probably going to be seeing all over Twitter the next few days of, oh, my God, Terra Luna Clash is going up like crazy. I think this is a scam liquidity grab. All right, guys, first one for today from Tipsy Tiger at Tiger Mike 15 SEC is full of clowns. So get this Gary Gensler and the SEC sue Ripple for all sales of XRP dating back to 2013. You remember they should have known it was a security. They should have just known it was a security. You know, a very new, completely infant, like, infant asset class that nobody knew anything about. They should have known it was a security, yet the SEC staff were only told in March 2019 not to trade it. Meeting from August 2021. Hashtag Gensler, you mug. Uh, I would read through this thing, but guys, I think we pretty much get the point right here. One thing I want to know about... <clears throat> Okay, because we know we got corrupt SEC officials getting bribes from the ETH Foundation indirectly through retirement benefits that are, you know, not being indicted right now. No one's going after them. Fair enough. What I want to know is, did any of the SEC officials open up shorts on XRP when the lawsuit went live? When the lawsuit was first officially announced, I know that... SEC officials were told in 2019 not to trade XRP, but, you know, also the SEC ethics officer was telling him not to meet with Simpson Thatcher, and he met with them three more times. So we can't just look at the SEC, you know, being told not to trade XRP and just trust that they weren't able, they, like, they didn't do it at all, because the SEC officials like William Hinman have a history of being literally told by their own administration not to do things, and they go ahead and do it three times in a row after the warning. I guarantee you there's at least two SEC officials that did have leverage short positions on XRP just before the lawsuit news went live. That is something I want to know about for sure. Okay, guys, check this one out. This is Stavely Official bringing uh, TradeFi and DeFi. Visit our website. Uh, Stavely is excited to partner with Ripple for technical support to launch our stable coin as USD on the XRP Ledger, the 10-year-old blockchain with zero downtimes. Uh, designed to enable settlement and liquidity of tokenized assets at scale. Read more at Stavely.io. Uh, very, very interesting. This is not, you know, the Federal Reserve or big government, but this is still someone trying to run a stable coin on the XRP Ledger, which I do not think really much exists yet. I do know we have, you know, USDT, uh, which can run on like Tron and ETH and its own native blockchain. Then you got USDC, which is strictly Ethereum. So, you know, you got to pay 70 bucks to send 100. Great deal. And then you have something uh, token called DAI, D-A-I, uh, that's, I believe, also on Ethereum. So quite interesting how we have a little bit of a USD stablecoin coming to the XRP ledger. 
Next one, guys, check this out. Ripple's submission to the Fed versus the recent Fed Now announcement. Sounds like to me Ripple has been heavily involved in building this infrastructure. Okay. Federal Register Notice. Objective, promotion of ubiquitous, safe, and efficient faster payments in the United States through facilitation of real-time interbank settlement, potential Federal Reserve actions, develop a 24-7-365 RTGS service, more faster payments, develop a liquidity management tool to support RTGS service. Okay, interesting because how this is just meant for the United States for domestic payments, but looks like it could be not only being a domestic service because they're looking for a liquidity management tool to support this real-time growth settlement service. Okay. One thing that has absolutely just blown my mind away about Ripple is the Ripple liquidity hub. Because I know you guys remember Bob Way. We had him on the channel here for an interview for like three and a half hours. He always talked about this one thing called like X pool. And he always said he could not reveal too much about it. And he literally even came up with this very non-answer answer of like, oh, you know, I'm just going to give you a clue. Like there is like a patent that can go through that could theoretically raise XRP price. Develop a liquidity management tool. That's what the beautiful thing about the Ripple Hub or the Ripple Liquidity Hub is that they, that's the thing. It's like all these exchanges delisted XRP and then Ripple just, you know, busts out two middle fingers and says, you know, we're going to build our own exchange for a liquidity source. That's what's absolutely brilliant. Okay. Use the widely accepted ISO 222 standard and other industry best practices to support interoperability. Features to enhance experience for financial institutions by broadcasting participant availability to support their transaction to 24-7-365 operations. A user interface to support data needs and the ability to have access to balance information on weekends. A liquidity management tool that will allow participants and others to transfer funds to each other to support the liquidity needs of instant payments. And again, because the, the whole community is like arguing and getting so like triggered about this whole Fed now thing saying like, oh, it's just domestic payments, the U.S. dollar. There's, they don't need to source liquidity from anyone. It's just the U.S. dollar. But that's the thing. You never know for sure, man. You never know for sure. Why are they wanting to source liquidity? If it's just going to be U.S. dollar, like you don't need to like source another asset for liquidity, theoretically. But you never know because Fed now is not just going to be only for the United States. They are inevitably going to branch out into cross-border payments because that's where the friction lies. Okay. Next one for today, guys. Ripple partners with Web3 Design Lab to promote the use of XRPL in Japan. Guys, freaking love Japan. Um, they, I, I cannot wait to travel there. I do hear they are opening their borders very, very soon, which I think could bring some strength to the yen. Uh, I know recently, actually, the dollar has been getting quite strong. Uh, and um, comparatively, the yen and like the Korean won have been weakening. But with travel reopening, we could be seeing the Japanese yen making a comeback. So on Thursday, September 1st, Emi Yoshikawa Ripple's VP of Corporate Strategy and Operations talked about an important new strategic partnership for her firm. Earlier today, Yoshikawa, who has been working at Ripple for nearly six years, tweeted out uh, about a strategic partnership between Ripple Labs and Web3 Design Lab, which was founded by design and marketing company B-Trax. So you can see the B-Trax tool. Uh, I'm not going to pretend like I can read any of this. I do know a lot of these characters, but I cannot decipher any meaning there. Um, she went on to say, The XRP ledger already has various functions such as token issuance, DEX, and smart contracts under development, and NFTs coming on September 13th hopefully. Uh, so we hope that it will be used in various Web3 use cases in the future. In particular, the point of differentiation of XRP Ledger is that it is an enterprise-grade chain that has been running stably for 10 years. Uh, B-Tracks Inc., which is also headquartered in San Francisco, said in its press release that it established the Web3 Design Lab as a new service aimed to revitalize the Web3 business for Japanese companies in the global market. Uh, Takahito Iguchi, uh, who is the founder and CEO at Audio Metaverse Incorporated, has been appointed as exclusive advisor to the service. So, let me tell you guys something pretty interesting about Japan. Um, you can kind of, uh, like, you know, maybe... Ask Crypto Eddie about this because she's a, you know, valued XRP community member, um, makes great content, and is been living over in Japan, honestly, a little bit jealous. But one thing I learned about Japan is, although they are a highly fast-paced, competitive society, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Japan is the third largest GDP in the world. I, I believe, yes, Japan is the third largest economy in the world. 
right? But there, there's something kind of interesting about Japan you should know. Two things I learned was, one, uh, most people in Japan, like, still usually pay with cash and coins. Because, like, you know, our coins in the U.S., uh, or in Korea, for example, you know, I know I have to talk about Korea for every like every five minutes because I went there two times. I know it might get a little annoying, but like in the U.S., for example, um, we don't really use coins for like any sort of real payments. Like coins, I think people just think of as like trash. Essentially, I don't. I have like a huge, uh, you know, Jose Cuervo bottle of tequila where, um, I like I just every time I get coins or small bills, I just throw it in there. And, like, every time I'm finding, like, you know, pennies, dimes, and nickels and whatnot on the ground, I'm always throwing it in that savings because, honestly, the best money is the money, you know, you didn't, like, you didn't know that you had. So, in Japan, they primarily, for being such an advanced society, they're still really using cash and coins very daily. Like, all their vending machines, like, yeah, it'll take card and stuff, but people still very commonly use cash and coin on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and... Learn from a documentary that in Japan, a lot of these companies, dude, they're, like, still using fax systems and, like, paper to manage things. They're not really throwing everything on, you know, PDFs and email and all that stuff. And it, it's just kind of fascinating because they're, they're such an advanced society. I mean, some of the engineering and inventions they make, I mean, they, they pretty much make the most reliable cars on earth, like I know Honda and Toyota, that's like the number one hottest like used car on the market right now because they're just, they're built great and they're engineered well. So there's such an advanced society, but they, they like, in this digital generation, like they, they're still using cash quite frequently. And I'm not speaking for like all people and all the companies, but for the most part, they are still on, you know, using fax machines and using paper. And in Japan, another thing I learned is that like, let's say uh, you're working, you're a business and you're working with another business and you need to, you know, tell them something, right? Like, yeah, you could email them, but in Japan, it's considered very polite to actually go there and greet them in person and then deliver the message physically as a sign of, like, respect and the meaning that, like, hey, like, you are important in my life. That's why I came here to visit you and talk to you about this when I could have just gave you a phone call or email, All right? It's pretty interesting, man. Like, honestly, I got to say, like, before I, you know, left America for travel, I don't know, I feel like my mind was so, like, enclosed and, and trapped in, like, only thinking, like, America's, like, the only thing that exists. Like, I mean, I know when, like, the superhero movies come out and it's like, oh, they're going to save the world and the whole world is, like, just America in the movie, right? But you got to, like, it's it's crazy. If you, if you do travel the world and, like, go around to new countries, it, it genuinely expands your mind and can even really change your dreams because you realize that, the city you live in, the country you live in, there is so much more to this world than the place you live, All right? Next one, guys. Kind of interesting. In South Korea, the solar panels in the middle of the highway have a bicycle path underneath. Cyclists are protected from the sun, isolated from traffic, and the country can produce clean energy, man. That's that's the kind of innovation we're thinking about, and that's why we think XRPL is going to be on top of the world because it's fast, efficient, cost-effective, and perfect, man. All right? Last one here from Blockchain Backer. Get ready for 2.xx per gallon gasoline. We'll start seeing regions posting pictures of it in the next week or two. I used to be paying about six fifty a gallon for my car. I know I got to get freaking Supreme gas. I hate doing it, but you know, makes the, it's what's recommended for the car. What's recommended for the M3 makes it faster. Gets me those good pops and bangs. Um, I I was paying six fifty, and I just checked recently. And now they're only asking like three ninety nine, which blew me away. How in like just a few months, my gas cost has been essentially sliced in half. So get ready for the cheap gas. Um, it's quite crazy how I always remembered as a kid looking at diesel. I'm like, oh my god, wow, diesel's like a dollar ten. That's that's such a good price. Like I want to get a diesel. And then now diesel is literally more expensive than gasoline. I swear to God, like, diesel owners got scammed, honestly, because that used to be so, so, so cheap, and now you're literally paying more for having a diesel motor. All right, guys. Thank you for the video today. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next one.